So let's go inside the architecture of UFS. UFS itself, of course, is, is composed of several different layers. Uh, at the bottom layer is the uh, MPHI uh, physical interface, which uh, can be, uh, it's designed architecturally to either be single lane or, or multi-lane over time. Uh, on top of that, at the protocol level, is Unipro, which is a uh, MIPI Alliance standard that provides for reliable communications uh, across the, the MPHI link. Uh, above that is what's called, uh, is where the UFS protocol itself uh, starts. And so within that, that UFS protocol layer, there is a command set that is implemented uh, that is based on the uh, SCSI semantics. And, and then above that, you, can, you would have drivers hooked into the operating system. Uh, or you would have interfaces to flash memory if you're designing uh, a device. There's also a configuration port access that allows you to figure out which devices and hosts are on the net, what their capabilities are, uh, so that the operating system and the UFS device can, can communicate efficiently. The, the, the whole idea behind this is to try and use as many uh, standards that uh, that work together as possible to, to take advantage of the best technology that's being developed for mobile uh, and for large file system uh, multitasking storage uh, and not reinvent the wheel in every case. So, so UFS architecturally, it's clear, uh, implements this philosophy in a way that, that provides the highest performance at the lowest power uh, for embedded mass storage. So if we go into the UFS architecture in the next level of detail, here you can see a, a complete UFS system uh, consisting of a host and a device uh, with the internal architecture exposed. And so on the left side is a typical structure for a UFS host. This would be an application processor, uh, which is talking then to uh, embedded mass storage, say a phone or a tablet, uh, or, uh, or a camera uh, that has an operating system already installed in it and a set of apps uh, already preloaded uh, when you first get the, the device. And so you'll see the lower levels of the protocol and the architecture are really very much the same on both the host and the device side. In fact, many, uh, much of the very same uh, IP, that is uh, ASIC cores or save machine designs, can be used in both host and device implementation. Where the differences in implementation occur is higher up. Uh, on the host side, of course, you're going to have a driver that will talk to an operating system, and that operating system is going to implement a file system and a way for actual applications to run. On a device side, uh, you're going to have a flash memory controller uh, and an interface to the actual mass storage devices. But below that, the implementation uh, of, of UFS itself uh, is actually very, very much the same, in many cases the same IP. Now between these two sides, there has to be a communications channel. Uh, and in the case of MPHI, uh, that's an electrical uh, set of wires, uh, basically a, a set of transmit lanes, differential pairs, and receive lanes, uh, differential pairs, with the power, and then there's a reference clock uh, that is optional in M5 but is required in UFS in order to optimize power management and enable very short bursts of high-speed data to be transferred so the system can then come in and out of power, low power modes very quickly. This is the point at which many of the uh, kind of uh, tools for compliance and test instrumentation would actually get physical access to the UFS system either to look, examine the traffic between the device and the host, uh, or uh, verify that the physical and protocol interconnect is working properly per the MIPI and the uh, UFS specifications. So uh, at the very uh, bottom of the architecture is a physical channel, and this is how the host and the device uh, communicate with each other. Uh, and in the case of MFI, this is done through electrical signaling on differential pairs. So there'll be a, uh, one or more transmit signals going from the host uh, to the device, and one and more uh, received signals going from the device to the host. And this is really the main point where test instrumentation and debug and troubleshooting tools 
uh, will connect to either a host or a device in order to take a look at uh, what the protocol, what the traffic is moving across uh, those links to determine whether the implementation of MFI and Unipro is correct uh, and also in order to do pre-compliance and compliance testing for both host and device products. And I'll talk about that compliance testing more in a moment.